What's up guys? Devon Hog Gamer here. Today we're going to be talking about the dilemma we have with uh, aircraft and helicopters in Arma 3 and kind of how it can be improved a little bit in Arma 4. But before we get started, I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free online PvP strategy game. You choose a real country to lead in a modern global warfare. Fight with 128 players in real time in games that take weeks to complete. Bunch of different uh, units to build your army, tanks, jets, nuclear submarines, nuclear weapons, a lot of really cool stuff. You declare war on your neighbors, forge alliances with other players, and you just choose your own strategy and engage in epic battles, take over the world. A lot of really cool long-term strategy things you can do here with setting up different points to engage to engage from and just pouncing on an enemy and just nuking them to dust. <laughs> you can play with both PC and mobile, and you get an exclusive gift. If you click the link down in the description below, you get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free, and it's only available for 30 days, so don't lose out on it. Also, a special game was created just for the first viewers that click the link. The details will be shared at the end of the video. Of all my times playing Arma, and even in the OFP, and in the mill sim scene, I could probably count on my hand, both hands, the times that there's been aircraft constantly involved in any mill sim operation, or even helicopters. And the reason is, well, the maps are small, and the planes are OP. Nobody wants to be on the ground patrolling for eight hours or engaging in battles and, you know, maybe shooting one or two guys and having, you know, a Harrier come by and drop JDAMs on the head of every enemy all around them. Or a Tornado come by and just, you know, carpet bomb the whole area and kill all the enemies. Or an Apache just smack every fucking tank on the battlefield. There's no fun in it when you're infantry having an aircraft come around and smacking the hell out of everything. Especially when it comes to, to Armor 3 because the maps are small and... You can basically sit across the map and just drop multiple JDAMs and, you know, missiles all over the place. That kind of creates this dilemma where you have to balance out fun for everyone. And, you know, aircraft kind of ruin the fun for a lot of the people on the ground. This kind of goes with a bunch of different games, too. Uh, Project Reality is another big one where the helicopters usually go around and just smack people. So people tend not to play the maps with that. But there are kind of ways to balance it a little bit to where you can make it a little more fair. But at the same time, a little, a little harder to be an aircraft pilot and not you know basically an angel of death in the sky we're kind of going to talk about that but first i'm going to show you a little bit about how these aircraft are op and what they can actually do in arma 3. all right so we're in the f-35 we're going to hop back in the cockpit and out off in the ocean we got a russian ship and i'm going to show you exactly why these maps are so dang small for the type of combat that you get with ships First of all, we're going to turn our radar on, our spherical coverage, and we're going to switch to our JASMs. These are long-range standoff cruise missiles, which are freaking crazy. Speed up a little bit, and we're going to open up the APG-81 imagery. Now, this is a direct-feed satellite, so we can actually see what's going on. Oh, I don't like that angle. I don't like that angle at all. Let's go ahead and get a new feed going. Let's get a new feed going. I mean, aircraft are great in Arma 3, but kind of useless at certain points. Okay, there we go. All right, from there, we're going to speed back up because for some reason it started slowing down. We can also tap directly into UAV feeds with this thing. We are going to go to our GPS INS guidance and set a target. I'm going to get in as close as we can. Mark the target there. Mark acquired. All right, so now we just set the GPS coordinates to all of the JASMs. And we have four of them. And we are, like, way off the map. And this should actually be pretty far enough to do what we want to do. We can just get our target locked back. Not even seeing it. Let's try this again. Let me make sure the guidance system is actually locked like it's supposed to be. Oh, shit. Okay, this should be good. Nope, we're gonna have to fix it. <laughs> we're gonna have to fix it. Deselect. Target 1 is still the same target. Alright, there we go. And watch this. 1, 2, 3, 4... All right, and now we get off into a nice little, uh... We're on the opposite end of the map here, basically, is what's happening. 
And you can see the camera. That's our little spherical. It shows us where the missiles are coming from. And uh, we're going to watch this. This is a live feed of the enemy ship that's about to get pummeled. Now, it should actually react to the missiles and try to take a few of them down. Yep, there they go. Too late. <laughs> Dead skis. Let's see if we can get another satellite image of where that actually was. And see the sinking ship, possibly. Maybe. No. Zoom out a little bit. It's gone. It's just, like, we were on, that was like, what, a 20 kilometer shot? Not even, maybe even farther. Just too easy, man. Well, if your infantry unit surrounded by a ridiculous number of tanks, don't worry. The F-16C's got something for that. CVU-105, the sensor-fused, wind-corrected cluster munition. Yes, that is right. We're going to murder pretty much everything we want with it. Um... You drop these suckers, and... Yeah, that's a bunch of tanks over there, right? See them all? Oh, and they're all trying to run. Look at them. It's amazing. Drop a few of these, and it's game freaking over on everything that is below. We can... Uh, these are unguided, so you just kind of drop and just let the sensors take over and do everything that needs to be done. We're going to drop... Eh, okay, we'll drop three of them and watch the chaos, because it's going to be absolute chaos. So we kind of go down a little bit, and one, two, three. And they pop, and everything starts to die. Yes, pretty much every single tank just got hit with a cluster munition. <laughs> and you know what? We can actually, oh shit, that ship's still out there. I never removed the ship. Run! Whew. That is a lot of dead tanks over there. A lot of dead tanks. Like, the entire tank platoon has been obliterated. Amazing. This is why a lot of milsim units don't run aircraft. Because um, they're OP. They really are. How about anti-runway bombs? The Durandal. You want to take out a runway? And make it completely unusable for the enemy? Don't worry, we got something for that. These things drop, and then when they point straight down, a rocket powers them straight into the concrete to completely destroy the runway and make it unusable. Let me show you. Let me, let me slow down a little bit here. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five. Oh, I missed. Well, one of them went down into it, it seems. These are for, like, very high-speed passes. They seem to be broken, unlike what they used to be. Here, and watch, let me show you what happens when you actually go to land on this damn thing. Oh, there seems to be something in the runway. Oh no, we can't land here! <laughs> As you can see, Arma 3 isn't really built map-wise to house the kind of modern weapons that you get with most aircraft. And while, yes, you can do awesome cast missions and, and really help out ground forces, 
most of the time you can stay well without a harm's way, depending on the mission creator, and just destroy everything on the ground. I think one of the bigger issues that we kind of have with DCS is the capabilities are there. There is a clickable cockpit, Apache, basically one-to-one, -one, like a huge project for it. Capabilities are there for Arma 3 to be a flight simulator. I mean, you can make it pretty much DCS with ground stuff if you want to. If you wanted to, you could. But the problem is the map size. The map sizes are easily the big Achilles tendon and the view distance. The Achilles tendon of DCS. You got to find a way to balance map size between ground forces and aircraft, along with view distances, and you know, making FPS a little more better. I mean, if, if you crank the view distance for aircraft, the ground forces are going to have the same view distance and their frame rates basically need two. I mean, most mil sims are running at 30 FPS anyways <laughs> with the amount of AI on there. Now you give them 12k view distance and watch them really chug. Kind of the big issue. Number 4 has to kind of find a way to, to not only balance map size with air and ground, but also view distance with air and ground. You can do the, you know, there, there are mods that if they become into the spec of actually being in Arma 4 could really kind of change the way those things are done. Um, the customizable view distance between air, land, and ground. You can do that. There's a mod for that. If you actually add that into Arma 4, boom, you got it right there. Everything will be A-OK. -okay. Also, with different kind of SAM sites uh, would be awesome. There's a, there's a bunch of different mods like Pook SAMs that add different SAM sites, different varying ranges, along with harms and things like that. If that gets kind of pushed upon and, and built upon, you can kind of, you know, make for your, your shore ads and your long range shit and kind of make a different varying degree of, you know, SAM sites to kind of make it a little more challenging for aircraft. Aircraft would have to kind of neutralize the SAM sites or send in special forces teams to do that before you'd end up getting into, you know, providing long range casts and things like that. It's kind of like a big issue that I want to see Arma 4 relegate on because if you compare aircraft from OFP Arma 2 to Arma 3, Arma 3 is leaps and bound mod wise than what you would find in Arma 2. And I think naturally Arma 4 is going to be 10 times as good with whatever tech that they come out with. So going from baseline and making it to aircraft kind of kind of have an area to compete but also not dominate would go a long way with Arma 4. Uh, new SAMs, view distance, you know, things like that would be a lot of fun. I, I'm interested to see what they do with aircraft and Arma 4 and, you know, what, what we can expect from not only that but the modders for Arma 4 because, frankly, Arma is made by mods. 1000%. It's always that way. So, it would be really interesting to see exactly what we get uh, with, you know, Arma 4 in that sense. But I would like to see some some kind of highlight done on aircraft with Arma 4 and kind of making it a little, little easier to integrate without making it super, super OP. But at the end of the day, you know, you can, you can kind of build upon that with you know, mission builders and things like that. But let me know what you think. You think Arma 3 aircraft are OP? Do you use them in your mill sim? What do you want to see with Arma 4 aircraft? Let me know in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.